The FCC stays privacy regulations for consumers. 32 million total Yahoo accounts were hacked with that cookie problem a few months ago. And Cloud Pets is really digging themselves into a grave with this toy hack. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings! Welcome to the show! I'm Shannon Morse and this is ThreatWire for Tuesday, March 7, 2017, your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. This show is now on iTunes as well as your favorite podcasting app, thanks to our patrons over at patreon.com slash ThreatWire. Make sure to subscribe and now on to the news. And of course, we couldn't forget about the FCC. Back in October of 2016, the FCC adopted broadband consumer privacy rules that allowed consumers to decide how data is used and shared by ISPs. The rule required ISPs to protect the privacy of consumers and offer transparency and security protection for personal data. Because if you didn't know, ISPs basically know what you're doing on the internet, unless of course you take your own precautions, but that's a whole nother segment in itself. We reported on this back in November 1st of 2016 on a ThreatWire episode titled, Are Hacker Counterattacks Legal? At the time, Pi dissented to the ruling. Now with the FCC chairman being Ajit Pai, a temporary stay has been made on data security regulations. The reason? The FCC does not want to impose different privacy regulatory rules on ISPs than the FTC does on companies like Google and Facebook, because the FTC basically makes the rulings for companies like that. The stay will remain in place until the FCC comes up with new rules that better mirror what the FTC has in place. In the meantime, though, there is no regulatory guideline filling that consumer protection gap that this stay creates. When the FCC will come up with new rules is yet to be announced. Now also, in a speech at the end of February, Pi also spoke about the FCC's approach to zero rating, which is a, basically a fancy term for free data offerings from mobile carriers. Even if you are on a limited data plan, you can still have access to certain sites without them counting towards your data if that site pays the mobile carrier some kind of hefty cash. According to Pi's FCC, it's consumer friendly as even folks folks on low income can access streaming and entertainment. On the other hand, net neutrality advocates disagree because it is unfair to companies that can't afford to pay for zero rating. On what looks like a positive note though, the FCC will be voting on new rules allowing mobile carriers to take a more aggressive approach to scammers. Now in 2015, the FCC allowed carriers to offer call blocking services to customers. And the vote on March 23rd will further that action to solve problems having to do with scammers spoofing caller ID numbers, which can lead to cases of identity theft or stolen funds. So for example, if a scammer was to say spoof the IRS phone number, and then they say that you owe money, you could get your money stolen by the scammer because you think that it's the IRS. Go figure. Now since 2.4 billion robocalls happen per month, according to a blog post by Ajit Pai, it looks like this would be a good thing. But should we be worried about giving mobile providers too much control over which numbers can call you? Hmm. I guess it's yet to be determined. In an annual filing to the Securities and Exchange Commission, Yahoo disclosed that 32 million total user accounts were accessed since 2015 by hackers who were able to forge cookies for these accounts to log in without a password. The company suspects that this cookie hack, which was first reported back in December, is tied to the attack in 2014 of 500 million accounts. Both are suspected of being state-sponsored attackers. In the report, Yahoo disclosed that 26 specific accounts were targeted by attackers and they were consulting law enforcement. And by the way, that's on page 47 if you really want to read through the entire thing. I'll be honest, it's really boring, but that part's on page 47. No information was actually given about what 26 accounts were targeted or why. Okay, let's talk about something a little creepy. More than 2 million voice recordings along with 800,000 email addresses and passwords were exposed by Cloud Pets, which is owned by Spiral Toys, connected stuffed animals that allow parents and kids to make cute little voice recordings to each other. So they can record their voice with the pet, saying I love you to their parents, and of course the parents can reply. We have heard of this kind of problem before. It actually turns out that it was a public-facing MongoDB database 
database that stored all of this data for anybody to find. Worse, the database required absolutely no authentication to access it. Troy Hunt of Have I Been Pwned, and that's owned with a P.com, was sent some data with the publicly facing database and confirmed that it was the real deal. No one knows how many people had actually accessed the information. The anonymous person who sent the data to Hunt did attempt to contact Cloud Pets first three times with no responses. Worse yet, after some recon work against the Cloud Pets mobile app, Hunt determined that the profile photos and voice recordings of these toys were easily found via their Amazon S3 storage links. That's scary. So Cloud Pets also had no password strength rules, which while their passwords were encrypted with bcrypt, easy, super easy passwords like the letter A, or ABC, et cetera, they could be cracked in no time because they didn't say you had to have them over eight characters. You could just put in an A and that could be your password. It's terrible. And the story doesn't end there either. <laughs> yeah, it turns out several parties accessed the Mongo database and even deleted the databases while demanding ransoms to be paid in Bitcoins. Since January 13th, the databases don't seem to be publicly accessible anymore, but parents were never ever notified of the breach. In several quotes by by Spiral Toys CEO Mark Myers, it appears that the parent company is not owning up to its mistakes. They denied being contacted, they denied evidence of the hackers, and so on and so forth. Since Cloud Pets is owned by a company in California, Spiral Toys, and California has mandatory data breach reporting laws, as stated by Hunt, by sweeping this breach under the rug, it appears that ignoring it and lying about all of the proof might be severely illegal. Before I go, I wanna give a huge thanks and a big e-hug to everybody who has supported the show so far on Patreon. You have made it possible for us to create that video RSS feed for iTunes along with your favorite podcasting app. So thank you, thank you so much. If you find value from this and you wanna spare a few cents an episode, a whole dollar per month, that's 25 cents per episode. That helps us reach our next goal. Please consider becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash threatwire. We may even feature your adorable fur babies just like these ones. They're super cute, by the way. Keep sending them in. I love seeing all your fur baby pictures. You will get access as well to extra content, a new audio RSS feed, which we have been going every single week, and new perk levels. I hope that you will continue to help us keep this coming completely independent and completely ad-free. And of course, if you cannot donate, that's totally cool too. You can like the show right down below, you can share the show, and you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. That goes a long way too. And of course, you can find all of our episodes, links to our social networks, and a whole list of cool people that have contributed over on Patreon, over on our website, threatwire.net. And with that, I am Shannon Morse, and I will see you on the internet.